David's restaurant in the Melbourne suburb Pran, one of my very favourite Asian restaurants. And this, I'm going to try to recreate one of their dishes. I hope, I hope. And what it is, is a lovely fat Shanghai noodles. This is their description with pork and black vinegar. I love black vinegar. They use black vinegar a lot in that place. I've got 150 grams of finely sliced pork fillet, which has been trimmed. To that we add a couple of tablespoons of Chinese wine, a tablespoon of light soy, and where are we, dark soy. About half a tablespoon of that, not too much of that. A little bit of sugar, just cast of sugar's fine. About a teaspoon of that. One and a half teaspoons of corn flour. This is the thickening agent, so you throw that in now, and we just mix that up, and we leave that for oh, 10 minutes? Yeah, I reckon so. Now, the thing that I love about David's restaurant, he's got a, he's got a few of them these days, but the owner, David, is a very clever man. He's, I think if I remember correctly, well, I do know that he's a tea expert. So if you're interested in really interesting teas, he imports huge numbers of them. The other thing is, I think he's a, a doctor as well, but a doctor in Chinese medicine, but I'm not absolutely certain of this. So David, if you're not, I apologize, but I think he is. But anyway, in the early days there, they used to have all these wonderful medicinal soups. Don't have as many anymore. Sadly, they weren't hugely popular, but they did make you feel good, I promise you. Anyway, this is their noodle dish. I hope I do it proud. All right, that only needed about 10 minutes. And then into a hot wok, a little bit of oil. And all I'm doing at this stage is sealing the pork. So separate it a bit. You don't want it big clumps. I don't think David's Chinese chefs would bother with a little pair of tongs. They do it in those huge woks at 100 miles an hour, toss it around, have a wonderful time. Me, I'm not so good. <laughs> all right, then we just get rid of that. Now, a little bit of fresh oil. I'm just using veggie oil, of course. Some garlic, just sliced. One clove. I've got some shiitake mushrooms here. Now, the shiitakes are dried, and what I've done with them is I've soaked them in cold water for a couple of hours. And then you cut off the stalk and discard it. So we just toss those around. You can smell the aroma of that garlic. That's lovely. And the shiitakes, dried shiitakes are a lovely thing. Then we start thinking about a bit of liquid. Obviously, black vinegar. Bit of dark soy, not much dark soy. A little bit of Chinese wine. A little bit of light soy. I don't mind the idea of adding a little bit of water or stock to this. And a little bit of sugar. Not too much once again. And we're just cooking that down a bit. And I've got some udon noodles here. Now the udon noodles, of course, for a Japanese doodle, aren't they? I've just cooked those for 30 seconds, actually, in boiling water. I've also got some bok choy, a head of bok choy, which I've washed very well and chopped up. And the pork goes back in with any liquid. Now let's have a little taste. I reckon this might need a little bit more black vinegar. That's just me. Actually, that's good. I don't know whether David would shut his restaurant and say, I think I'll leave it to Ian, but still, that is rather good. Nice flavor, it doesn't need any more vinegar, really doesn't. I thought I was gonna get an email from David, say how dare you tell, me, tell them about me and then come up with that mess, but actually this is nice. I don't know whether it's quite the same as David's, but lovely flavors. And the black vinegar is the secret, it just comes through. Just adds that little bit of extra. Now I've just sliced up some chili and spring onion as a garnish. You don't need to put any chili on it if you don't want to. I just think it adds a little bit of a bit of kick to it. And with that, now we know our wine guru, Mr. Neil Prentice, is a very clever man, but apart from having the wonderful job of being the wine guru for my YouTube site, he also makes some bloody wonderful wine. And this Holly's Garden Pinot Gris is one of his best. It's named after his daughter. And if I can open it. So it's named after his daughter. And he tells me pork and Pinot Gris 
are an absolute marriage made in heaven. And if he says that, I can tell you it's true. Anyway, David, I know that's not exactly how you would make it, but it still tastes darn good. And at Pinot Gris, a ripper wine.